right, so here I am working on my 2008 250cc Moto Bravo, which anybody watching this video, you probably have never even heard of the brand Moto Bravo. For all intents and purposes, what we're working here, we're going to say this is a uh, Rocketta GK19. So what we're going to talk about today, is there a way that I can give up top end speed and lower uh get better takeoff and and you know basically higher torque uh, at takeoff so that you can kind of roll around the hills just a little bit better so i took this thing up the uh, up the hills here i live in utah the milton yeah if you want to find a steep hill you can find a steep hill if you want to find medium hills you can find medium hills if you want to stay on flat ground that's kind of hard to do but um took it up in the hills and i had that basically the stock set up and it actually did okay but when you put a second adult in this seat i mean i weigh about 225 pounds go, go run, run around the road it's just fine uh, flat surfaces it actually does pretty good i top but by myself my my fat butt uh i can top out at about 47 miles an hour now the reason that i made that's with being by myself when i put an adult in there i lose about eight miles an hour uh eight or nine miles per hour uh, as far as, uh, you know, top, top end speed on the flat ground, mind you. Um, so what I want to talk today about is, 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 is there a way that you can toy with and change the gear ratio of this CVT or continuous variable transmission that comes on these GY6 engines? And the answer uh, I am delighted to tell you is yes, and with surprisingly good results. It's, it works really much like a snowmobile where you have to get the engine up to speed like a centrifugal clutch, you have to have kind of the weights inside that expand out and then they grab, you know, the, the outer gear that would drive your wheel. So the question is, at what ratio with your engine RPM acceleration is it actually engaging your, the axle of your wheels? That's really the question here. And how can you change that? So the way you do that is, yes, there's other YouTube videos out there on how you can upgrade uh, your your CVT. Um, there's there's heavier duty springs that you can uh, that you can install right here. There's a big spring right here. There's heavier duty springs. I mean, I've got a Kevlar belt, uh, which seems to be pretty decent. I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if there's any more upgrades that you can do uh, to that. But this this has an asymmetrical belt setup, which means the side closest to me, away from the engine, is actually angled downwards, and that's so that as this uh, as this pulley separates, it, this belt is allowed to kind of climb up and down on an angle. Uh, you have to have, you have to have the uh, the angle uh, facing out away from the engine in order for this to work correctly. So bear that in mind. Um, otherwise, you're going to learn a lesson on either burning up a belt or messing up your CVT in some other way. So just make sure your belt goes on the correct way uh, if you're going to do what I'm about to show you. But anyways, uh, to keep this video short, the magic is right here on this front pulley. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this nut off and I'm gonna pull this assembly off that actually comes off pretty easily. And it works, uh, get, yourself, get yourself a little bit of a little swivel. Otherwise, you know, this is gonna be kind of difficult uh, to take off. This thing actually is pretty difficult to take off uh, without an impact wrench, so just know that. Um, You've got to find you've got to find a, you know either a, a an oil strap a wrench or something to hold this this uh, aluminum wheel in place because you can't hold it with pliers. If you hold it with pliers, you're going to break it. Um, you just can't do it, or you're going to dig into it, and you're you know you're going to risk creating a scenario for your belt to to catch on something. So I'm just going to zip this off real quick. Okay, so there's that one nut and a washer okay and then and then this outer pulley you can just pull right off see nothing special here just a really light uh, piece of uh, aluminum so I'm gonna set that there I can just take my belt and just kind of drop it down here and then um, I'm gonna reach back here and I'm just gonna try to kind of start sliding this out if I can um, so See how it just kind of comes off the shaft. Okay, so it just, it basically just slides off. And um, I have a newer clutch 
So that's part of the reason why I think it was hard to get off is I need to kind of to get these machine teeth to be exactly, you know, uh, in line with the older teeth that are on the drive shaft on the, on the engine. These are, this is a 21 tooth on the 250 as far as what I found. It's a, a 21 tooth spline. And they're all pretty much the same. There's nothing, it's, it's kind of hard to get the wrong part. Okay, so here's what it looks like front and back. So here's the back of it. This goes against the engine, okay? Uh, here's some little cooling fins here to just keep air moving around it so it can air cool. And then this is the side where the belt will actually rest. So on the back of this, you can kind of see that I, um, at the factory, they stripped these Allen screws. And so I just, if you have to do it like I am, I just took my Dremel and just cut uh, a flathead uh, slot in it. So I could, I basically just turn them into flathead screws. And then I have some other Phillips ones that I'm going to replace them with because um, it's just going to be easier to deal with rather than these small Allen key screws where they'll strip pretty easily. So as I'm taking this apart, you'll notice kind of on the right here, you'll see these roller wheels. This is actually the magic of what you're, what you're about to see. So these, in a 250, the stock clutch comes with, each of these weighs 28 grams, okay? Now, the way that you change the gear ratio to give up higher end speed for more low end torque and higher power takeoff is you lower the weight of these weights. So I'm gonna go from a 28 gram down to an 18 gram. And from some research that I've done online, that's kind of the sweet spot, somewhere between 16 and 20. So I was actually surprised the, the 150s, uh, when you're looking at the 150cc go-karts, they're talking like 12 grams, you know, 10 gram weights. Uh, but basically, um, the lower the weight of these, uh, the lower um, the weight of these rollers, the more angular momentum you need to actually throw them out to the outside of, of the clutch, which means that it's going to engage the, the belt sooner when your engine is at a slower speed. So I won't get into that much more. All I'm gonna tell you is you gotta trust me, that's how it works. Um, so I'm actually gonna, to get the top off, I just have something that's right about an inch in, uh, in width. So I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna put this in there and then just turn it and then just I'm gonna just lift this cap up here. So now, what I when I pull this off, you can kind of see there's a, what I'll call I don't know the cradle. Um, these plastic things, uh, these sliders will 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 drop, so don't let them fall off your workbench. And when you pull them out, so you okay. I was a little rough after I uh, after I removed it from the engine, but did you see? This is really important. You guys need to understand this, uh, or otherwise you're gonna end up doing this to your rollers. I wasn't very careful when I took, from the time that I walked from the buggy over to my workbench, I wasn't very careful to keep this all slid all the way down, and I'll show you what I mean. But you see what happens is, is the rollers actually come out. So you have to be really careful. Once you get them seated, you gotta push, you gotta, you gotta push your axle down, and then you've gotta have, you've gotta have your, your, uh, your cradle here. And it's got to sit down there right on top of them. See how far see how far down it is? Now, you don't hear any rattling whatsoever, right? Those balls are or those rollers are stuck right in right in place. But if I actually lift it up, if I actually push where the belt rides, this little keyed uh, spacer, now see how the, see how you can shake them around? So so that's actually what happened is, is when I was doing my initial experiment trying to figure out Okay, I'm taking these uh, taking these apart and putting them back together. Look what happened. I actually installed this and I drove it with two of the rollers out of their out of place like that. So when I put this back together, I'm going to be very careful to push this all the way down. Make sure the cradle sits all the way down in there, and then I, I I'm going to keep it pinched with my hand until I get it all the way on the buggy and in place. Uh, and you know when I'm installing the belt and that, to ensure that all those rollers will stay in place. But but that's really all it is. You have where you have one part, two parts, and the rollers. That's it. So all you got to do is see how the rollers just kind of that's what they do. They just roll inside these little slots. 
All you got to do is pull the old one out, put the new one in. So you, so basically, I just pulled my. This is my 18. Let's say I, for some reason I'm going back up to 28. So here's here's an 18, and now I'm going back up to 28, right? And then you just swap them all out. You can kind of tell these ones, these lighter colored ones are newer. So so that's it. Like that's that is the magic of of now I'm going to reinstall everything the way that I took it off, and like. I'm going to notice I'm, I'm going to have so much better takeoff and lower end torque to go do a little bit more climbing in the hills. Now, granted, this is not a four wheel drive ATV. It's not designed, you know, really to go rip it at the dunes. But I mean, this thing, uh, this thing actually can do OK. I'm, I'm I feel like I have pretty demanding expectations of my motor vehicles. Um, but again, I don't get out and romp out in the dunes and try to go 85 miles an hour across the sand. Uh, or up a mountain. I, I like, I, I kind of drive like a, a middle-aged man, right? Not a grandpa, but a middle-aged man. And I do like performance when I ask for it. And I feel like this has definitely done it. So with my little poor man side-by-side -side here that I've, that I've resurrected from, from definitely a, it's, it's a grave, um, I'm very happy with, with its performance, especially now that I've gone from 28 uh, to uh, 18, 18 grams, I feel like that gear ratio is just right. So now, now that the balls are in there, or now that the rollers are in there, okay, I've got all six of them. I'm going to just slowly just kind of start putting this back together. I want to make sure, oops, see, I told you, you, you got to, these little sliders come out, and you got to pay attention to these little guys. Okay, so I got three in place. So I'm going to kind of pick it up with my fingers, holding them in, holding them in there. And then I'm going to slide it down on there. Okay, making sure that it, I've got in each groove. And now I'm going to push, I'm going to make sure that I push it down. Okay. Or I guess I can put this, I can put this cover on. Let's do this first. So I can put this cover on. Okay. And then again, I'm holding the camera with one hand, but I'm gonna. Uh, I've got that on, and now I'm gonna take these screws. I'm gonna line that up and put the, these three screws in there. And then what I'm gonna do is when I pick it up, I'm actually gonna push my thumb down, and I'm gonna hold it tight just like that. And see how that kind of sticks out this side. So if I shake it, no rattly, right? No, no rattling going on there. Those rollers are stuck in place. And I'm gonna walk very carefully over to the buggy. And then I'm going to slide it on the shaft here. So that's what I'm going to do after I get the, the three screws in. Okay, well, and then there's the question of, hey, well, should I grease the rollers or not? Um, I've kind of tried to, you know, find some objective opinions online on this subject. Some people say you don't need to lubricate them. Other people say you do need to lubricate them. When I ordered a whole new clutch from, from the parts manufacturer, it was greased. It had blue grease in there, but it wasn't caked in there. It wasn't packed like a, it wasn't packed like a trailer bearing, right? But it had some, some grease in there. Um, at least, at least it was lathered in grease, but it wasn't caked on there. Does that make sense? Uh, so what I've kind of found online uh, from people is, you know, use something like the white lithium grease, which is basically what this is. Um, Okay, so now uh, I've got my, I, I've, I've been very careful to kind of keep it in place. So now I'm just going to kind of push this back on the, on the shaft. Okay, and then I found that because these splines are still just a little bit tight, I'm actually going to take my, gently guys, gently, I'm going to take my, uh, this is a 19 millimeter socket by the way i should have said that at the very beginning but this is a 19 millimeter socket and i'm just going to gently tap it on until it seats seats on there and um you can kind of see like how much of the splines you see right there and then i'll show you what it looks like uh in just a second once i tap it on the okay so basically that's now on all the way there's just enough spline here for the outer and you can kind of tell it's not very thick but there's just enough spline there for the outer piece. And again, I know I'm not putting my belt in place, but just to kind of show you, you want to be able to, you want, you want that spline to go right to the very edge of uh, where the threads end right here. 
and that's how you kind of know that you've got this thing on all the way. So um, one, one more installation tip is if I go like this, that belt is actually fairly tight around uh, the, the, uh, the bushing right here. So what I'm actually what I'm actually going to do, you can kind of see how the belt is on the all the way outside of the pulley, and so that means that it's as far that way to the back as it possibly can, thus making you know this uh, sh a shorter length to work with. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to put the camera down, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger, my 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 hands, I'm going to grab here, and then I'm going to grab on the opposite side, and I'm going to squeeze, and I'm basically going to this little pulley. I'm gonna sandwich that with the little uh, brake drum here, okay? I'm gonna sandwich it together and that's gonna create space for the belt to just kind of fall down in there. And what I wanna do is while I'm doing it, I'm gonna push on, on the back of the belt here when I, make, when I make that space and it's gonna allow the belt to go forward. So let me do that real quick and then I'll show you what that looks like on camera. Okay, see how, see how I just was able to push the belt in now? So now I actually have much longer length uh, of belt to work with. And this is gonna be so much easier to put on. Uh, so I'll put that on and then I'm gonna wrench it down with my, and if you squeeze right here, that's kind of how you maximize your length and get everything all nice and seated on there. Okay, so now I've got her all put back together. As you can kind of see, like that's about, like I've got maybe two threads visible right there. That's how you know that you're on the where you should be, okay? About right around two threads. So if you have something different and you have a GY6 engine, I'd be surprised if it's correct. But I've, uh, I've got two threads and I know that that's on there the way that it should be. Hey, one last uh, pro tip, just to validate that the rollers are in their positions is you kind of see how uh, you made you maintained, you know, by, by squeezing this out to make space for the belt to go in to make it longer so you can make, put this on easier. The belt just kind of sits there. Now, one thing that I can tell you, just something that I experienced is, is when I, when I messed up the rollers, the rollers actually never, or this belt in its resting idling position, the, the belt should ride right along the outside of this pulley to, at the very top. So if I start the buggy right now, and that belt does not climb to the very top, then I know that there's probably an issue with one of the rollers came out of place and it's not rotating at the correct speed uh, and angular momentum. So let me actually start the buggy real quick and let's just make sure everything goes into place. In a nutshell, that is how you increase or change the gear ratio uh, on your 250cc Chinese buggy. And uh, I went from 47 miles an hour to now I top out at about 38 miles an hour, but the takeoff and the, the low end torque is so much better. So give it a try. Uh, I totally recommend this. I don't need top end speed. I'm not driving out this, this thing out on like asphalt roads. And you don't need to go 47 miles an hour on a dirt road. Like that's just not safe. The frames just the frames on these things you shouldn't re go, go on that. You shouldn't be going that fast off road. Uh, is my suggestion. But okay, with that, uh, please leave comments uh, and questions, and I'll I'll try to address them. But this is just kind of one more little tip uh, with your Chinese buggy to help make things better. So uh, happy riding! Thanks uh, for watching.